Gintama isn't allowed to be good. Pretend that's the first time I said that. Um, <laughs> hello and welcome to the Net Show Podcast. This is your host, Craftsdorf. Here with my co-host, Mathwiz. Say hello, Mathwiz. Hello, Mathwiz. I... <laughs> It's the second time that 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 th- this time You're I just three years too late randomly. to do that joke. <laughs> I didn't know anyway. anything else. <laughs> um, so before we get into comments, check if you if you check down in the description there, there's a, there's a little poll. Uh, so as far as the ongoing series that we usually do between blocks, there isn't there still isn't anything that we can read yet as much as I would like to read, uh, especially like One Piece or Hunter Hunter. But, you know, uh, nothing we can do about that. Uh, so we're doing, now that the patron pick is, we're getting to the end. We only have the last arc in last two parts to cover for Gintama after this. Uh, so we're doing the 80s block. Uh, so what was your 80s block pick, Mathwiz? Oh, my 80s block pick was Saint Seiya. Do you even remember? Oh, okay, Saint Seiya. There we go. I had to I'm think sorry, for a second. I, I was like, did I change <laughs> Right? Because it's only been, like, we had these picks, like, probably since around when we started the Nen Show, and some of them did get changed, but yeah, Saint Seiya, uh, that's which, well, not just Saint Seiya, um, we're also reading Lost Canvas, which is a prequel series that some people say uh, is be- even better than the original series, and maybe Next Dimension, which is the ongoing sequel series. So, um, and my pick was Dragon Ball, which I have definitely been due for a reread for a while now. And, and I also, would probably uh, agree, because I do not yes. remember the last time I went through the series. I mean, I've never gone through the manga, actually. Yeah, so that'll be in new general. in itself, right? Yeah. Um, and also Dragon Ball. Well, so, like, this this time will be a little different because we're covering uh, not just, like, manga. Because we haven't covered, like, a sequel manga at the same time as the original like naruto and boruto were separated by a little while so like we'll we'll finish saint Seiya and then we'll go right into lost canvas and then next dimension maybe and we'll or we'll do dragon ball and all then uh some of dragon ball super because it did actually just end an arc recently so it, it was kind of good timing so we will be covering both of course as usual but if you still you still get to vote and decide which exactly we're going to cover first uh so go do that and then next week uh, we'll, you know, we'll, it'll be the last, the second to last Gintama episode, and we'll have our order decided, uh, for, uh, whether we're go- watching or reading, uh, or we're not, wa- we're not watching anything Why I say that, whether we're reading Dragon Ball or Saint Seiya first, and, uh, yep, and then after that will be another, after we finish both of those two series, we'll be doing another patron poll, uh, we're finally so. gonna be reading something other than Gintama, I know we I think we've read <laughs> stuff longer than this before but it just feels like we've been on gintama for like actually no the only thing we've read that's longer than gintama like naruto is longer episode wise but volume wise it was still shorter where um one piece is the only thing we've read that has more volumes than gintama so uh like we haven't read more gintama volumes than we have bleach because naruto is only 72 volumes and bleach was 74 where gintama is 77 so it's actually a few volumes longer uh but episode wise it is shorter than naruto and, and uh um, but, but yeah, so, yep, and, uh, one thing that would be majorly helpful is Dragon Ball is very well documented, but I, when I looked up, uh, Saint Seiya manga arc listings, I could only find, like, episode filler skip guides, which doesn't help me. Um, so <laughs> if someone could, especially, especially for Next Dimension, because I do know some people who've read Saint Seiya and Lost Canvas, but I don't know of anyone who's read Next Dimension, but if someone, if we get an, uh, just a raw arc listing of chapter to chapter of like here's where the arc starts and arc ends then that would help me for deciding or help us rather for deciding the nen show episodes um and how we're going to divide those because dragon ball we might even have to adapt it as we go because i don't know how long the discussion is going to be because it's dragon ball it's a series that everyone has a long history with um even well, if it, not like, ha- everyone, but I most, know, most people. people. <laughs> right, and so, like, I don't know how long we're going to be talking about it because we're, like, going to be thinking of, like, years of discussion and our own experiences alongside just, like, reading it for the first time in a while or the first time at all. So uh, I have no idea how that one will go. Or Saint Seiya we have no experience with, right? Um, 
Well, that, that I might have like a tiny bit of experience by the time we get to it, depending on when it is, because <laughs> of the project I'm working on. But that's yes. not official material, or I mean, like it's official material, but it's not canon material. Right. So I don't know and if that would. Count. I only know like bits and pieces. Like I had a friend in high school who'd read some of Saint Seiya, and like we'd talk about it briefly, I guess, or he'd mention it. Um, but yeah, so so it's like it's weird, funny how you get like two ends of the spectrum there, where it's like here's one series we know a lot about. And here's the series we know nothing about. Uh, so maybe that'll be accounted for in the voting. Uh, but yeah, so especially for Saint Seiya chapter, li- or arc, like we don't need arc listings for Dragon Ball. I've got it, and we're, we're already good. It's, it's just a matter of deciding how to dis- divide it up, and especially, again, depending on the density of the discussions. Uh, we're Saint Seiya, again, no idea. So anything would help. Uh, like, worst case scenario, I'll read Next Dimension myself and then decide whether we're going to how much of it we're going to discuss on the Nen show. Because um, it's only like 10 volumes published or so, maybe more than that. I don't know. I might be all right. I, don't, I haven't checked in a while. Um, but, uh, and yeah, Kraftdorf we'll, we'll... is a crazy person. He'd be like, oh, I can have that ready in like two days. <laughs> Not that quick, but I, you know, re- I could reasonably read it before. Like if no one has, you know, in the comments or that I know has read Next Dimension, then like, you, you know, even if we read Saint Seiya next, I can, I can pretty easily read. Well, no, I can't read Next Dimension because I have to read Saint Seiya first. Fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. You'd have to find a way to do it. Like after we read. Which well, what I thought about is if we don't get one, we'll just read Lost Can. We'll just read Saint Seiya and Lost Canvas, and then we'll just come back to Next Dimension later, like we did Boruto. Um, True. So, because we maybe could have read Boruto like right out of the gate after we finished Naruto, but we were kind of like, we've been doing this for fourteen episodes. Can we read something else now? <laughs> um, so we didn't read Boruto, even though we possibly could have. Um, it, though the episode wouldn't be, have been the same as the like it, we would have not done the hour arc or something like that. I don't know whichever arc was ongoing at the time. Oh, and I'm sure our discussion of Boruto back then would have been just mm. fabulous. How wonderful. Like, the Naruto discussion was uh, <laughs> its own uh, beast, so <laughs> to speak. So, all right. Anyway, comments. I did read the comments. I just don't have any to respond to. I don't either. I have one DM to respond to, but... um, That's think, not oh. fair. How was I supposed to read your <laughs> DMs? I'll just leak them. Um <laughs> No, but uh, it was an interesting comment, but it, it refers to a specific moment. So I want to get to that moment first before I bring up the 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 the, the, the thing. Um, so I thank see. you for the comments. Uh, we read them. We just didn't respond to them. Sorry. <laughs> um, though I swear to God, if I... I mean, people were saying, like, watch this episode of uh, Gintoki vs. Takasuki. <laughs> like, <laughs> instead of the normal, like, you should be watching the anime, not reading the manga. So I guess, like, slight improvement. Um, <laughs> did I go out of my way and watch that fight? No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just saying um there was also the one comment that like i thought was interesting that talked about like reader demographics but i would have no hmm. means of responding to that yeah no that one and well apparently it was reposted from an old uh video but i don't remember that comment so maybe it was only posted after we moved or like you know after we because there's like we're recording this episode on tuesday uh normally we, sometimes we record even earlier like monday or sunday um, and then this episode comes out the following Sunday. So that's like four to seven days that comments could be posted that we wouldn't read them for the discussion. So if that if that comment did get posted, it probably would have been after that point. Uh, so because uh, I don't remember that one. But anyway, starting off in the discussion, we get a little flashback with uh, Gintoki and um, Shoyo Sensei, who we learn more about <laughs> in the in the reading overall. And it's kind of setting up some of that stuff that we get later. In particular, how, um, you know, Utsuro, since he's nothing, only a human can be stronger than him. Or uh, So, oh yeah, and then there's a bunch of gags with the the Bount- Wanted poster, which was funny. But anyway, after that, uh, the, what, <laughs> I was like, uh, wait, their name is right in front of me, right? I should be able to just say the, the group name. The, the Kihei Tai, the, which is, uh, Takasugi's group, um, they come in and they, uh, want assistance because there's a bunch of stuff going on with the Harusame pirates and the, that whole betrayal arc that happened a little while ago got some fallout and one thing that I do think is interesting about this arc is that it like they haven't left earth before and so it was kind of neat to see an entire arc take place outside of earth because I mean, there, you know, there was the one Elizabeth arc where they were like in space but it wasn't yeah like but a that different... was at least 
Right, right, that's true. Planet. But that was still like in in the orbit around Earth, right? Like, so they they did leave the planet, but they were still in like the general Earth space. And in general, like they do have a lot of alien culture and aliens and stuff. And they've been, you know, on other spaceships and stuff. Like even in the yeah, one yeah. of the first arcs with the Harusame pirates. Uh, but uh, this one they full on went to a whole other uh world, which is neat. Actually, and, didn't uh, they do that in the gender swap arc also? Did they? I don't. Uh, maybe they, uh, maybe they did. Because uh, 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 um, I thought I the remember. people had like moved on to a different. Planet. Oh, they did. You're right. Okay, but the, uh, yeah, that, that was okay. That's fair. Um, never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> Since I was wrong, math was gets to lead the discussion. No. <laughs> Thanks um, for coming to the podcast, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> then she runs from her duty. <laughs> but anyway, since uh, they need help, uh, the uh, Kia Tai needs help. They go to you know uh, show his other disciples. And Sakamoto becomes relevant again, and I'm like, what the, does that, what, what, this isn't supposed to happen. Um, and there's a lot of, like, exposition and information dumped about the setting, like the Altanas, who kind of, like, tap into the, um, the dragon veins of the planets and get power and immortality, and then, uh, like, that becomes a whole thing. Um, it's neat. It's just, like, there's just times when I'm just like, wow, this is kind of a lot, I hope, uh, <laughs> I can remember it. <laughs> I don't know how you felt. Uh, probably the same. <laughs> I think I got it straight, but we'll, but because um, I guess that's the thing is like, you know, like we've we've seen the Tendo shoe, but now we know what their deal is. And in general, you know, like we've seen s- bits and pieces of this, but now you now here it all is at once and all tied together. Like because this is basically like the Yato arc also, but it also goes a lot into Utsuro and you know builds into the final arc. And but it kind of kind so it kind of ties that stuff together. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, the uh, Kagura sort of puts in her notice to leave, uh, or her um, fake, or what was it? Request leave of absence, you know. And then everyone, of course, goes as well because they all have their stuff to deal with, and they're gonna you know protect their varying families. Because like, there's the part where um, you know Umibozu wants to kill Kamui. And they, you know, they kind of want to kill each other. But then uh, Kagura also has that uh, line, um, I'm not letting anyone else kill Kamui. Uh, which, uh, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking through the manga. Uh, how did you feel about the reading overall, actually? Um, I think I had, like, le- I-, I don't know. What was I? I think I was, like, slightly less into this reading than I was the, um, the, the last, last one. one. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, like, it-, it was still good. Like, I enjoyed reading it. Uh, okay. Because I, I don't know, I definitely liked it, and I'm not uh, sure what my, like, because mm, it's like, especially Farewell Shinsengumi, I, I appreciate that one more after the discussion, um, but this one also had some really good stuff, so, especially later on. Yeah, because it's just, um, it's it's similar to those two arcs in that, like, it's doing the same payoffs, but just for a different uh, section of the cast. Right. So, like, especially um, for the Yato ones, uh, and of course the... Um, show you his disciples but it's also building up into the last arc which is you know going to take place on earth and uh is like going to be like a, a huge fraction of the manga yeah so, uh but anyway while they're out in space they're sort of like convening and stuff like bonsai uh is there and sakamoto's pick them up and uh then nobunobu comes in and he kind of immediately gets captured <laughs> like there's just uh um i quit fighting we're friends now uh but nobunobu gets some uh good stuff this arc surprisingly yeah yeah like my favorite part of this arc was probably his stuff with um uh sakamoto mm-hmm. oh that's cool because I, I i liked it but uh i there was some other stuff from later that i like i'd say i liked uh quite a bit but anyway they go to um they they even call it it's kagura's hometown and they it's like they even compared a bit to kapugicho like there's the gag with oh look the gorillas um <laughs> that, like kondo and otai and the author of the Ma- sorachi <laughs> which was an, yep that that's a gintama joke <laughs> i also like the one where like their um Bansa is like okay uh we have this is uh, we're, we're going to one of our deserted houses right over there and then it like explodes immediately and he's like uh no i think it was actually over there and that one explodes too and then everyone he points to like keeps exploding uh like that was funny <laughs> yeah it was good but yeah luckily this arc was uh pretty uh, quick to read at times because there's a lot of action uh, so like even maybe a bit more than the, some of the other arcs even the last two uh maybe like i like the line where they start the fighting and um there's like because uh you know bonsai's sort of getting respect for uh the other disciples of shoyo sort of talking about how um you know they saw 
or, you know, Takasugi's group saw them as, you know, bending and breaking to fit into the era. But, you know, even though their swords were, you know, beaten and broken, uh, they, the final iron that remains was still something that could, like, cut and push back against the whole universe. Be like, because they retain their, their core, their, their samurai spirit. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the blade that remains is strong. And I like, I, was, I, was, I like that. That was good. But anyway, they start splitting off into their fights. Uh, Umibozu with Utsuro. And then, I think, yeah, the first one was Katsura versus uh, Neptune. <laughs> Did you have any thoughts on this fight? Because this is uh, fucking Sirachi doing one of his bullshit things again. Where he takes a running joke and, like, ascribes a certain meaning to it. And is like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't think I had, like, the same aha moment as I as I did in, like you know, way earlier back. Mm -hmm. But maybe maybe for you, this was that aha moment. Well, because, you know, there was the flashback where he's like, oh, it's, uh, you know, he's he's the general, he's kind of the leader, which, you know, he was doing his own terrorist thing. And then, um, you know, so, I don't know. I, I just like the moment where it's like, it's not <laughs> Zura, um, or it's not Katsura, it's Zura. And I'm like, you fucker, you piece of shit, Sarachi. <laughs> Um, with, you know, he's finding, he, you know, he's able to, he's letting someone else take lead the way now. So, uh, yeah, I like, I don't know. I thought it was good, but yeah, anyway, after that was the, uh, Sakamoto and, um, Nobuno or w with Nobunobu involved against, uh, Uranus, I think his name was the robot guy, um, which started off with all the Gundam references, <laughs> which is, you know, and more stuff the anime can do. <laughs> do you like this one? Say something about it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I did like what it did with with Nobunobu's character. Um, you know, this whole thing of like he was just nothing. Like he was, um, like he he was he was the puppet. He was like, what what did he want power for? Uh, and he didn't like once he got what he thought he wanted. He, there was just like, there was just nothing for him there. There was emptiness, if you will. Uh, perhaps drawing a connection to Utsuro. Um, but yeah, like, it, it, I don't know. I guess it was mm -hmm. cool to see him compared to uh, Sakamoto. Um, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, well. Um, but yeah, like, especially the, you know, he got to the top um, on over, like, you know, all like through all these, like the Sea of Corpses, you know, this mountain of corpses rather that it climbed. Um, and well, like, there was even a little line later where Hala or referring to how, like, Takasuki was prepared to do the same thing because like his goal is destruction of the, like he wants to destroy everything right so him losing all of his comrades and stepping over their bodies would would have been fine though you know obviously now it's a little different but you know so like nobunobu was emblematic of like the establishment that takasugi was trying to fight against but they were kind of similar in that way so like when nobunobu reached the top over those bodies he was you know like what was it for like you said uh because you know and then um but then he is able to sort of like like yeah, stop being a puppet and you know fight against the, the the robot controlling him and help uh the battle end, which was it was good. Yeah, and I guess it is cool how like in the moment he is literally being controlled by somebody and he you know is able to break that control and stop stop like both in like the the greater sense of the story stops being a puppet and starts like doing his own mm -hmm. thing, but also like. In the context of the battle, he's able to yeah. break free, and uh, it's cool in that way. And I guess it's like, <laughs> I guess it's kind of surprising because he's like up until this arc, he's kind of been like a complete shithead, and uh, you know, like he's you know even been that sort of like useless puppet in the context of the story almost, where he's just getting like the like he spent the fucking farewell Shinsengumi arc in like bandages and shit, I think, um, right. Yeah. And then, like, the first thing he does in this arc is get captured. So he's always been, kind of, like, you know, in the story. In, oh, no, yeah, and even... He just keeps getting the shit kicked out of him, basically. But, you know... Um, or maybe it wasn't Farewell Shanks, it was Shogun, Assassin Shogun Assassination. But So uh, the character parallels between him and Shige Shige were there all along, because he was constantly getting beaten that's up. That's right. Constantly the... But he was, like... Yeah, Shige Shige was, like, a dopey, nice guy, and Nobunobu was a, an evil piece of shit. But, yeah, they still got, like, the shit kicked out of him, and they were just being puppeted... Like, they were the kind of the same. That's right. I didn't think about that. <laughs> and I guess that's also, uh, you know, drawing the... You know, connecting that to Sakamoto, who is always, like... You know, like, there's the part where they're escaping, and, um, I don't remember her name, but she just, like, 
they were following behind her and she just like kicks the pipe out and then they're like in, surrounded by the crowd of zombie people and they're like oh no so like he's always uh he's the leader but he's always um you know like not he's not like he's not like nobu nobu he's not uh stepping over people like right you know which, he's able to kind, kind of, of yeah. be on their level it, in that way mm-hmm. which is kind of following up his the flashback arc where he was able to like you know become the leader of even you know people who are determined to be slaves and you know he's he didn't see it that way um anyway next is uh gintoki versus pluto the the mr greatest swordsman um this one i think i remember more for the humor <laughs> like not that the fight was bad but like i don't know i'm like looking through and just the like it starts with gintoki saying that someone someone drew in your face dude <laughs> um like he thinks the third eye is like a marker and then later on uh like Pluto has this huge grudge on, against Gintoki, but then it turned like you know he he's blind. He he literally like he wasn't looking. He, he sensed Gintoki's aura, but he he was actually fighting like some dude who kind of looks like a, a fatter Gintoki. Um, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, well, because there's even the joke where Gintoki's like, uh, no, that wasn't. Or, or, or you know, I don't know who are you. Like, oh, sorry, do I owe you money? Do you owe me money? Like, he just he has no idea who this guy is because they haven't actually met um and yeah it was a different guy uh like that that yeah that stuck out to me more than the rest of the fight honestly he's doing the joke but in a a serious character beat yeah classic gintama yeah because like you know and of course they they they, uh you know pluto he only uh you know he kills his opponent when they're um they become hollow right before death or you know they they the translation even highlight you know utsuro they use it is highlights the use of the same word but uh gintoki's still thinking about the future so you know like he's just thinking about breakfast like he he's not you know he you know he's he's not succumbing to like his fear of death so it's neat oh yeah and i definitely got uh kind of excited when um takasugi entered the battle um just and part of it's probably because he's so aesthetic um <laughs> but uh and it was, and it was, I, I, and he was fighting alongside the guys that I'm like, yes, that's good. It's, I like it. And it's also just funny to see him in the char- character interactions now, um, like spitting on Sakamoto's face and telling him to like, you know, cause they're not talking directly. So it's just, you know, spit it, tell, or t- tell them I send that spit, spit right back to them. And it's just, it's, it's funny. So it's, I guess it's in the same way as like, um. You know, just as the the shoguns weren't um, weren't like above anybody, now Takasugi is finally uh, being lowered to the level of the rest of the cast. <laughs> yeah, like he's yeah, not just this mythical. Oh, I'm I I'm the the aesthetic edgy edgy boy who uh, appears once every two hundred chapters and looks ominous and <laughs> doesn't do anything. Like now he's actually, you know, like he's not just. Uh, the the spooky antagonist dude now he's uh he's he's the guy he's here Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah well i mean uh because i was even talking about last time like oh are they gonna save takasugi and i don't know if they've gone you know like he still seems to be like oh after this i'll 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 take care like you know that the i'll I'll take care of you later like after you know but only i'm allowed to take care of you so we got to take down these other guys first like that kind of thing um like but you know that's still kind of that like over you know that that's the, you know there yeah. so i wouldn't call takasuki saved yet but like we've taken a step in that direction um so you know progress is progress anyway then we get uh it cuts to umibozu for a bit him fighting with the uh, kamui and we get a bunch of context on them and it definitely uh, makes like um hmm, I don't, well there was one chapter that might have been recontextualized a little uh remember the 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 ad for bald people um, yeah with the dead planet and oh okay <laughs> like I- i'm curious yeah. about that one now like going back to it <laughs> yeah and i guess it does make sense that it would be- that that would have been an umibozu chapter because uh it turns out he's got experience with um dying planets mm-hmm. but yeah uh, they before we get to the flashback they they're fighting for a bit like kagura insists that kamu is still like uh you know, he hasn't changed. He's still the Cryberry, Crybaby Big Brother. Well, while Utsuro and uh, Umibozu fight, and there was uh, like there was one interesting exchange they had before we get to the flashback, where um, like what was it? Hold on. Yeah, that the like they, they're because they're talking about like the cycle of organisms, where how like you know organisms will naturally choose predator and prey, 
And Utro like claims that he's escaped the cycle of organisms, but then he's also like see like he's targeting Uibozu specifically, like he's you know challenged by like the strongest thing in the universe, um, right? Like he he's sort of in his mind can still you know he, like he said he escaped the law of cycles, but then he's still sort of framing things as predator and prey in his actions, yeah. I guess. Um, but of course, just the idea of like a cycle of organisms also. <laughs> <laughs> ties into Gintama using its dirty humor uh, when Uibozu gets a fucking erection in the middle of his battle because, like, and they, they even talk about the idea of, like, survival um, instincts and, you know, when your life is threatened, you know, you want, you know, I guess you procreate to preserve genetics and such. Um, but then, like, it's which reminds him of, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, shit, I forgot her name. <laughs> I wrote it down. Uh, Koka, uh, Kagura's mom. And so we kind of start getting the flashback to, uh, um, her. So it's like, it's high, <laughs> it ties the two, two together, the two moments, so, you know, the current fight and the flashback together through a fucking combat boner. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I mean, what do I expect at this point? <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, we get the flashback, uh, with Umibozu on the dead planet with Koka and, uh, well, and then also, like, during oh, this fight, we so. learn that there is uh, a bit of a connection between him and I think it was the girl from Sakamoto's crew. Yes, if I'm that's not who she was, right? Before she, because she was kind of being used by her family and stuff. And, you know, Umibos at one point was a bodyguard to her before yeah. she got picked up by Sakamoto before that happened, right? Because, uh, yeah, they do. I, that's that. Yeah, they, they do have a connection. Um, so it's because she was kind of like the only Yato character who wasn't uh, connected to any of the other ones. Like the fact that she was a Yato was just kind of like, oh, OK, that's cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of neat to see. And now that's a, like the way. Yeah, I guess that's another connection that makes me wonder. Hmm, I wonder if I'll notice anything going back. Like, this is why I think like, you know, I. I almost wish I'd lo- I liked Gintama more because then I would want to go back and see all those connections and stuff. Where now I'm like, I guess I'll watch the anime one day. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, because, you know, it is kind of neat to see, yeah, have all the, because there's a lot of context we've gotten in these last few arcs. So, it, you know, it's kind of neat to try try and think back to how it all ties together. But, um, but anyway, yeah, Umibozu was on the planet. Um, he only really got Koka to, to, like, actually, like, open up to him after he um, stopped literally thinking with his penis, I suppose. Um... So that happened. And then, of course, the whole conflict is also, like, especially when it gets into Kamui later, is, like, you know, strength. And uh, Koka, her, you know, she was immortal, but her strength was, like, choosing to, you know, live and eventually die with their family, rather or and create a family, rather than just, like, living forever alone. Um, where, like, with uh, Kamui and Umibozu, like, they they're, they weren't, they, you know, they were looking for strength, but they ended up running away. Um like, that's why Kagura was the strongest, because she was the one who didn't run away from her mother, even though, you know, uh, she was hurting and Umibozu and Kamui didn't want to see her hurting. Uh, kind of skipped ahead a bit, but <laughs> that's, I guess, where my train of thought went. But yeah, I like getting all the context for Kagura's family. And, uh, <laughs> like, I would say my favorite fart in this fi- favorite fi- the Sirachi's infecting me! Um, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite fight in the series... <laughs> Hey, wait, Would did you be... watch Ojimato Dorimi uh, Moto episode 40 already? No. It's very interesting to... that, that that was the word that you slipped up on. Oh, no. What am, <laughs> what am I going to get into when I watch that episode later today? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Kamui versus like everybody is probably my favorite fight in the series so far. Um, but is it as good as Aizen versus everybody? That's a good question. <laughs> Don't ask that to me because I like Bleach a lot. Uh, and this is the Bleach podcast. Um, Could Kamui beat Aizen in a fight? <laughs> <laughs> um, depends. Has he se- has he seen um, Aizen's sword first? Like, because like, hmm. that, like, that's, that's a pretty important <laughs> factor. Um, but yeah, I kind of like rushed to the fight. Now I think about it, because I just like went, followed my train of thought and went to the uh, like the the core idea. And I'm like, um, oh yeah, that uh, that was a good moment actually. Uh, scrolling through is a. Uh, when Umibozu was fighting Utsuro, and he kind of, uh, like, I just like how he's, like, I, or, like, or, like, cause he, um, you know, they use the whole, like, dragon eating the dragon analogy, but, um, you know, Umibozu threw himself into the stomach of the dragon so that he could attack it from inside, and then he also adds the line where, like, I'm the type of guy who buys a, a present for his wife a month in advance, and I'm like, okay, 
<laughs> it's just an interesting way to tie, like, again, the, the Umibose's family to his conflict with Utsuro. Um, and also the panel of uh, Utsuro, like, regenerating, like, with all the steam and stuff. Uh, definitely looked, uh, I don't know, that stuck out to me, I guess, a bit art-wise. Um, and it was just like a kind of a, oh, fuck moment i guess <laughs> yeah like i mean obviously like umifose is like yeah he's just gonna take out down what seems to be the main antagonist of the manga like in this arc but uh i don't know it was still good um and then sirachi does his character lose it's very interesting that characters like there are a couple of characters who consistently lose their arm um because it's the same with like umibozu umibozu and um the other guy, the other Yato, the guy working with yes, them. Yes, uh, right. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, they him. had, they, they, they lost their arm, and then they had an artificial arm that they also lost. <laughs> uh, but then right. here, and of course, and there's, like, a, a theme there with, um, oh, I lost my left arm to something with my family, and I lost my right arm protecting it. Yes, he, yeah, or, like, he left his left arm, yeah, he lost one arm abandoning his family, and the other arm he sacrificed to protect it. So, yeah. Um, and of course, it pay, it, there's the gag later where they're like talking about um, like uh, that you know he has a more higher chance of gr- regrowing new arms than he does growing hair. And then sure enough, he comes in with like rocket ha- hands. He's like, I got new hands, and he's like, they're they're like rocket launchers. So <laughs> it's like they, so they, they, the joke was correct, and then he he does he, like it's easier to get artificial arms than it is to get artificial hair. Um, I guess so. I don't know. Uh, Zarachi being Zarachi. Uh, but anyway, um, since Umibose is defeated, Kamui, you know, can't become, uh, you know, the strongest um, by defeating Umibose. So, uh, like, Kintoki kind of takes the, the the title of strongest because he's also Kagura's dad. And so now he's kind of becoming, like, uh, Kamui's dad. Like, he sort of takes that with, well, it, like, he does the headbutt and he, like, dies um, because... Uh, you know, uh, it was, he, he just butted heads with, like, yeah, one of the strongest people in the universe. Um, but then he's still able to, uh, beat Kamui because, you know, he has, uh, more strength. And in particular, we get to maybe one of my favorite moments in the series so far. Um, so is, uh, cause he's fighting Kamui and there's, like, a talk about names, right? And, um, you know, like, Kamui wants to be called the strongest, you know, but he's running away from his name of, you know, stupid big brother where um well because like with the thing with ginto and this goes to the dm i got from uh the one in white and he because he mentioned the 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 thing with names and how you know um you know gintoki he was a demon he was shiro yasha and then he but he was given the, i think he was, i believe he was given the name gintoki by shoyo sensei and uh now he's been given the name um from his time in uh kabuki cho with uh um with everybody you know he's yorozuya ginchan and, um, like, basically, like, him getting these names sort of made it help him become more human, which is, you know, again, what he needs to be to defeat uh, Utsuro. Um, and, like, but when he was, like, building up to it and talking about how, um, you know, he, ha- like, I hadn't lost anything, you know, he was just running away, which, of course, like, you know, goes going to Kamui and Umibose running away from, you know, uh, her- the mom dying and uh, where, you know, Gintoki, of course, had also been kind of, like, running away from his past, but then... Now he's, uh, you know, by by being willing to, you know, get get, get new bonds and protect other people, he, you know, um, he, he he found some kind of, you know, he found his name and found, like, that humanity that Kamu was trying to run away from. And uh, I don't know, just, like, the way he was building up to it and talking about it and kind of, like, overcoming himself and, rec- you know, like, you know, recognizing his prior faults and, but accepting them and, like, you know, accepting, he he's accepting himself after all that self-hatred. And so I think I, that's why I started to tear up. And, uh, so when he said, uh, you know, I mean, was like, and this, that full page of, with him just, you know, setting his name is like, I don't know, I, it, I really liked it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, oh, there's also the moment where, like, he try he goes to attack, uh, Gintoki, and, well, cause, like, Kamui, you know, he, you know, it's, it, he kind of gets his contradiction revealed to himself because, you know, he wants to become the strongest by, like, cutting everything away. But then he hesitates when Kagura steps in front of Gintoki, right? Like, he isn't able to stop being the big brother he he can't shed that name and he can't become get become as strong as he wants to because of that in that way so he he can't you know and uh it was a good moment Ooh, i got a headache all of a sudden but uh we don't have that much left actually so it's ah, fine 
Um, oh no! <laughs> but yeah, no, it's cool that like you get to see Yorozu come, all, everyone come together. You get the moment with the other Yato, who you know he wants to, you know, because the the role that Kamui took the longest was a uh, Haru Samai pirate, and you know that he wants to you know be behind that leader again, running forward, and like everyone's sort of seeing their own um, perspective on Kamui, like his of the all the identities that he's trying to run away from as they all kind of try to step in to stop him, um, and it's it's just pretty good, and I liked it. Yeah, because, like, in that sense, it's a bunch of little mini fights within the bigger fight. Uh, and, yeah, a bunch of characters get their stuff, they get their moments in, and it's it's good. You even get you even get Shinpachi and Kagura get to do some fighting, which is like, hey, yeah, which... <laughs> they get to do something. Especially, especially Shinpachi, because, like, Kagura, she's a Yato, so, of course, she gets to do, you know, she's really strong. Or Shinpachi, you know, I sometimes forget that he can actually fight and is also strong in his own way because he doesn't do that as often, and he is, like you know, the, like, the Usopp of the group in a sense, like he's the weaker one, I'd say, but, uh, no, he still has his moments. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, he, uh, you know, he defeat, he gets defeated. He rests in uh Kagura's lap as she accepts him as family. And he, you know, accepts his place as family and it's good. Um, so we're almost done with the arc before that. Uh, I don't see, I don't even know if I have much to say about the popularity poll at this point. Um, do you, um, uh, t- uh, <laughs> characters <laughs> like, yeah, are all basically I, I don't i don't know if any positions change they look yeah that's the similar. thing is like it's and even if they did it's like they're kind of exactly where i would expect them to be right like gintoki at number one you know hijikata at number two okita takasugi katsura like yep like everyone's yeah it, it, this is like one of the most like like it's not like gamabunta is in ninth place or you know iruka has you know is really popular in japan so i always like huh that's a lot um or or you know the we- huge gaps between like what was it Killua and karapika and like everyone else <laughs> um right so there's nothing weird about it i guess which is f- like i guess that not think about it it's kind of funny in itself because it's gintama and it is a weird series so if i have a, have a popularity poll that i look at and go like yeah makes sense like <laughs> there's, yeah. there's nothing weird about it so I just, that i guess in itself is uh i mean um okita's sister ranking 28th is pretty notable i suppose considering she only appeared for like what five chapters at most um but other than that like nothing particularly weird kube kube is uh is sadly low but you know um sirachi too high <laughs> <laughs> Also, I I like the little joke that Shimpachi gets eighth again. Like, <laughs> right? that, like, that's he's that like. However, whoever is like voting in these polls are doing like just enough that Shimpachi is always eighth. <laughs> is that because if you turn an eight sideways, it looks like a pair of glasses, and then I just hear the Discord disconnect sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was anyway. something else re- re- regarding his name, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, oh, maybe. Mm. Well, I guess Pachi sounds like Hachi, which is, means eight. I don't know. Um, maybe that's maybe it was that simple. I don't remember. <laughs> that I don't know because that sounds right, but I, I don't remember. Anyway, we also get some stuff with Obero, who was in one of the earlier arcs uh, as a as a major enemy who fought uh, Gintoki, and that's right. We kind of get the whole like flashback and how like um, you know he sort of sacrificed himself so that Utsuro could have more disciples. Um, even though at the end of the day he just wanted to be one of you know Utsuro's disciples, but uh, and, I don't know, good flashback, and uh, yeah, this uh, is also the... where we get the information that um, that uh, Utsuro is. It reminded me of um, uh, Sensui, Sensui? Yes. yeah, from Yu Yu Hakusho. The whole like different selves and yeah, yeah, like well, because it was something with like immortality and how like. You know, he's lived for so long and, like, finding a way to, like, uh, cope or, like, survive yeah, he through was, all of that. Right, he was being, like, tortured and stuff and to sort of, like, protect his mind, he would split off into all these personalities to take, to sort of share the burden. And, um, yeah, one of those was Shoyo Sensei who decide, who wants Utsuro to stop existing, um, right? And, uh, yeah. And, of course, that you also got the, uh, well, like, and I guess what was because you know the whole thing with gintoki and his his past was that you know he you know he he cut off part of his own soul to sort of carry on shoyo's soul and you know the kids who only did you know only understood part of the situation were kind of messed up with that uh, by that but now that they do understand anything and they've grown up more uh like 
you know, by, you know, Gintoki, you know, by protecting, you know, the other disciples and, and by protecting Shoyo's will, he's able, like, you know, now they have these disciples that can stand against Utsuro, right? Like, they're, they're carrying on what, uh, or, uh, what Shoyo wanted to defeat Utsuro, basically. So, you know, kind of, uh, adding more following context to that decision, um, and yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 neat, and it's, it's, I don't know, it's cool. I'm looking forward to the last arc, um, but that is mostly where it ends. I think short episode, which makes sense because it is just one arc, where the last one was two arcs. Um, I feel so. I feel, I feel like I, I did, really didn't think this one was going to be longer than the last one, even though it's like r- like a, roughly the same amount of chapters, if not shorter. Um, yeah, I feel like this is. Um... A rare instance where, like, generally, I'd, uh, like, in previous episodes, I haven't had much to say about Kintama because, like, I haven't been into it. But I enjoy this arc, and I still don't really have, like, much specific to Yeah, I was even on. thinking, like, especially earlier on when we were getting to the build-up, I was like, I don't think Mathwiz has been less talkative in an episode in a while. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like starting to get, like, uh-oh, uh-oh, how do I get Mathwiz to talk? What do I say? What, ha- what has to happen? Do I just go speed through and get to something interesting? Like, ah! <laughs> like, um, uh, so, yeah, if, uh, if you didn't see me sweating, that, that you, you could, maybe you could hear it. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... I know there was a part, like, there were a couple of things in this arc where, like, I don't know, the ways in which characters were wounded was, uh, very specific and, like, ugh. Uh, like, the part where, like, Kamui gets, like, stabbed through the leg or, um, Takasugi mm-hmm. where he gets, like, the, the knife in, like, like, in one cheek and out the other cheek and it's like, ugh. Yeah, it's, it's pretty violent, which is... Yeah, I, I'm I wondering mean, if that's going to be, like, a new design aspect, like, if it's going to stick mm-hmm. or if it's going to be a wound that oh, yeah. heals. Good like, point. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think the only other thing I had to mention, like, I'll check my notes again. I did th- find it funny when, um, like, Kagura comes in with another, like, leave of absence t- notice, but this time she's requesting paid leave of absence. <laughs> <laughs> You, she's, you look. You're, you're old enough to get that. You don't. You're not going to get any money from Gintoki, right? Um, so, I, that was that was funny. Um, and of course, it's it's another one of those um, taking the start of the arc uh, framing device mm-hmm. and retooling it at the end. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, Although it was I guess a fun arc in this instance. Now that I think about it, because like a lot of the time when that happens, it's. Uh, it's a comedic thing getting turned into a serious, um, That's you know, true. recontextualized and this was a comedic... seriously <laughs> at the end. <laughs> and this was, was the opposite. Thing. <laughs> getting turned into a comedic thing, you're right. Um, I, that is a good point. I didn't think about it like that. Um, but yeah, I guess that, that about covers it. Because I, yeah, I looked at my notes and I think I said everything I wanted to, at least that I remember. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, I enjoyed the arc. Like, it had some of my favorite fights in the series. It had, uh, you know, one of my favorite moments in the series. Um you know, so I hope, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how the discussion comes across as, but we did like the arc. Um, maybe it's just more that Gintama fatigue and we just uh, are waiting for it to be done, even though, like, we have been enjoying it more lately than we have in, uh, overall, I think. Uh, so, yeah, if um, anything, this seemed like the opposite of normal, where it's like, I enjoyed the reading, but just not as much the discussion whereas like up to this point it's been like i enjoy the discussions but not the reading i'm confused (laughs) clearly gintama is just too high iq for me i am dumb i am dumb and i just can't uh i i I don't know i don't understand (laughs) can it be helped at this point i don't know we're almost done uh hopefully like uh, you know we'll see what dragon ball and saints say bring us but anyway uh so next time we're starting the silver soul arc um Starting with chapters 596, or chapter 596, and then ending with uh, 669. Um, so it is like a, a, a fairly large chunk of chapters, um, but apparently it's a good place to stop. And even though, uh, like, the, the part after that has less chapters, a lot of the, or a handful of those chapters at the very end are, like, really long um, because of, like, I feel like we, I feel like we talked about, like, how Gintama ended up being published, where, like, it had to end its run and jump early and get moved to a different magazine because uh, Sorachi misjudged how long it would take to end the series. I did re- remember. I, re- I remember reading his apology to the readers because uh, he, he um, before I he touched Gintama. Um, so, so even though the last reading is like technically like thirty chapters, I think it's still longer than that just by page count and stuff. But uh, yep. Uh, so uh, thank you for listening. And we will see you next time.